And Cecile, what is your read on tonight's results? I want to remind everybody that we are talking about the red state of Kansas, and yet voters turned out in record numbers on this specific question, Post Dobbs. How do you? How are you reading the results so far tonight, Cecile? Well, it's an extraordinary victory, really. Really, it's amazing. This is, and of course, the Republicans tried to rig this election. You know, run it on a primary uh, date where they didn't expect anyone to be voting, and instead, we've seen people waiting in line for hours to vote. This is, uh, I think, this shows exactly what we learned in the many years I was at Planned Parenthood. That if you put on the ballot the issue of whether or not people who are pregnant should make their decisions about their pregnancies for politicians, overwhelmingly people will vote in favor of people who are pregnant. This we saw this in South Dakota, we saw this in Colorado, we saw this in Mississippi, and so it doesn't surprise me in some ways that the people of Kansas have voted overwhelmingly to support the right of people to make decisions about their pregnancy and keep politicians out of their personal lives. But I think this has got to be a wake-up call for the Republican Party that has fought to outlaw abortion in this country. Uh, this this is coming at them hard and fast. And these elections in November, uh, I expect this is going to energize our voters. This is going to energize people who do not vote in midterm elections. And that, to me, would be the biggest wake-up for this, for this uh, uh, what we're seeing tonight in, in Kansas, is that people who were not expected to vote came out in droves. And I expect they're going to be back um, for the midterm elections. Cecile, just a quick follow up in terms of um, the turnout today. The, the reason why it's it's so fascinating to do a breakdown of it is because this is the first time post Dobbs that abortion is actually on a ballot. So, you know, political analysis, um, you know, it doesn't trump what voters actually go out and do. How can other Democrats, other other people running in this election who support the right to choose, how can they message around the issue, given what we're seeing in Kansas? How would they look at these results tonight and utilize the message uh, and take that to the voters in November? Well, I honestly don't even think it's a messaging issue. I think it's a matter of saying, who do you trust to make decisions about their bodies and their pregnancies? Trust women. Um, that's really all you need to know is to trust women over politicians. And that's where the American people are. This is there has never been a better opportunity for candidates and elected officials who support the right to make your own decisions about your body, support personal freedoms to say that and put the Republicans on defense. They are way out of line. They are way out of line of where the American people are. Uh, and if they're out of line in Kansas, you can imagine they are in every single state that's going to where there are competitive races this November. Uh, this is a wake up call uh, as big as we could possibly imagine. And um, I really want to thank the voters of Kansas for making this very clear. This country does not want to take away the right to safe and legal abortion. Jennifer, do you think that could be because of some of the stories that we've been reading just in the last couple of weeks. I mentioned earlier the woman in Texas who carried uh, her dead fetus inside of her for two weeks because of the Texas's ban on abortion post Dobbs. Speak to the, those unintended consequences and that wake up call that Cecile is talking about. Did the anti-abortion movement perhaps underestimate the backlash uh, that they would receive after Dobbs? I actually don't think it was unintended. This is exactly what they think of women. This is exactly what they think of abortion. The Supreme Court put no value whatsoever on women's fundamental rights, on their health, on their lives. And this is the natural consequence of what they did. And I think these stories have been arresting, have been deeply disturbing. But more important than a specific case here or there, they have sustained a conversation among women, among men, people who normally would not be discussing this issue or maybe not discussing politics at all. And now they are looking at this and they are having this conversation. Are politicians going to force someone to remain pregnant and force them to give birth? This sounds like something out of communist China. And in a sense, it is. It's tyranny. So I also think 
following up on what Cecile said, it's not only national Republicans who are out of touch, all those state lawmakers who have been passing these bans and the governors who have been signing it, they are completely out of touch with the people in their state. And those people, many of them, are going to be on the ballot as well. And Democrats um, are certainly going to point out that state lawmakers, governors, uh, all sorts of people up and down the ballot have been uh, promising to enforce these draconian laws. You have prosecutors, you have the attorney general of Indiana who is going to go after a doctor who performed uh, an abortion for a 10-year-old rape victim. So all of these people are going to be accountable. They're going to face the voters. And this is real. This is not now hypothetical. Um, they may wax lyrically about um, a, a future person that has yet to be born, but we are looking at born people. We are looking at women who have real lives and real interests in maintaining their freedom. And I think um, this, I cannot express how far this exceeds expectations um, that uh, mm. people in the pro-choice community had. Um, this is Kansas. And I think if you had talked to people yesterday, you would have said many people would have been looking just to see if it was close um, and to say, well, if it's this close in Kansas, Look what it could be in another state. Instead, it's winning by 25 points. That's almost unheard of. Um, and if you want a unifying issue for Americans, we're supposedly divided on everything. Democrats and Republicans can't agree on anything. Well, s over 60% of Kansans agree on pro-choice um, uh, initiatives. So I think this is going to be important for every office uh, for uh, judges who are on the ballot in many states, state Supreme Court justices. Um, and I think um, we are going to see um, a, a real revolution and a real uprising. Um, I think uh, the Republicans uh, maybe uh, expected everyone to roll over and kind of um, just give up, throw up their hands because the Supreme Court said there is no right to abortion, so there's no right to abortion. That was the opening bell. And now I think you're seeing um, the real force of uh, the American public come through. And I will add that the reason you see this so strongly and you don't see the same results in state legislatures and uh, governors who are passing these is because we do not have voting rights in this country. Those state mm -hmm. legislators are in districts that are uh, meant to curtail voting, that curtail the rights of the poor and uh, people mm -hmm. of color. And so they don't reflect the views of the people they are supposed to be representing. Presenting. So I think um, this is a big wake up call for pro choice forces and a big wake up call for democracy. And if people aren't representing your interest, you kick them out and you get people who are.